This lesson deals with a mesh current analysis example. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 8, starting at page 52. Consider the following frequency domain equivalent circuit, where I've got one independent voltage source, one dependent voltage source, three resistors, two inductors, and a capacitor. And in the frequency domain, we have the impedances of each element. So assign a mesh current I1 and a mesh current I2, and let's use the inspection techniques we developed in ECE201 to write the mesh equations in matrix form. We'll then use MATLAB to solve for the unknown currents I1 and I2. In ECE201, in chapter 3 on pages 30 to 36, we developed an inspection algorithm for mesh equations. What's shown here is what was on pages 35 and 36, and this is step 2 of the algorithm. We're going to form a set of equations of the form V is equal to Z times I, where V, Z, and I are matrices. If we have N meshes, then V will have N rows in one column, and Z will have N rows in N column. The vector I is our unknown, so that would be N rows in one column also. The ith component in this matrix is found by taking the sum of the voltage drops of the voltage sources in a counterclockwise direction. The entries in Z are two types, the diagonal with some of the impedances in the ith mesh. The off-diagonal terms, this is where the entry is not equal to the same subscript, are found by taking the negative of the sum of the impedances connected between meshes I and J. Let's do this algorithm on this example. Let's look at the next page and see how the matrices are being written, and I'll do it here on the schematic. Okay, in our Z matrix, we're going to go around mesh 1 and add up all the impedances and put that in row 1, column 1. So I have 1 plus J2 plus 12 minus J16. What's between meshes 1 and 2 are a 12 ohm and a minus J16 ohms. So we're going to add those two up and then take the negative of their sum. Go around the mesh counterclockwise, the first sign that you see is a plus, and so we have plus 150 at angle 0. I'm going to write that in rectangular form, so it'll be 150 plus J0. Let's go to the second mesh here. We'll go on this mesh and we're going to add up all the impedances. So I've got 1 plus J3 minus J16 plus 12. That'll go in row 2, column 2. What goes in row 2, column 1 would be the impedances that are common between meshes 2 and 1, negated. So 12 minus J16, the, the quantity negated. Go around the mesh counterclockwise, you see a minus 39I sub X, and that's going to go in the voltage vector in row 2, column 1. Let's go to the next page and take a look at that. So here's our voltages, here's our impedances, and then here's our unknowns I1 and I2. We've got two unknowns here, I1 and I2, but then I have another unknown here, I sub X. But I sub X is the current in the 12 ohm resistor and the minus J 16 ohm capacitor. Let's go back to the previous page and take a look at where those are. So here's I sub X, and here's I1, and here's I2. So I sub X is equal to I1 minus I2. Back to page 53 here. So that's the value then of I sub X. Now I'm going to multiply that by 39, and we'll put that on the other side of the equation so it become a plus 39. So let's multiply that by 39. So you got 39 I1 minus 39 I2. So now we're going to just put this on the other side of the equation. And so I'm going to have 39I1. I'm going to add that to row 2, column 1, because that's going to multiply I1. And then we'll put this next term over here, which is the minus 39I2. So when you multiply this times I2, you get that particular value. So I can add all the terms together and get this in a little simpler form. And so adding 39 to minus 12, I get a plus 27. And then I've got 13 and then minus 39, so I get a minus 26. Okay, now we'll turn to MATLAB and have it solve for I1 and I2. Let's again, let's write a script file, call this mesh.m, and I'll give it the matrix first. So here's Z11, so Z parentheses 1 comma 1, that's 13 minus 14J, semicolon, so when we run this, we won't get the echoing of what we just put in, because we can see it. 1, 2 is minus 12 plus 16J, row 2, column 1, 27 plus 16J, and then Row 2, column 2, minus 26, minus 13J. Our voltage vector is 150 in row 1, column 1, and 0 in row 2, column 1. And then we can solve for I as the impedance matrix Z backslash, this is matrix of division, V. Let's have it actually find the value, the magnitude and angle of our currents by asking it to take the absolute value of I and the angle of I, and then multiply that by 180 over pi. Here's our output that's on the screen. So we see that I1 and I2 have a real and imaginary part, and then we found the magnitude and the angle of I1 and I2. And that's writing equations by inspection and using MATLAB to find the results.